I gotta be honest, he's quite good at it. He is top notch, and the new service seems to be doing wonders for the passenger situation. Indeed. And to top it off, I don't think I've ever seen him this happy before. And why wouldn't he be? He's surrounded by amazing engines on this amazing island. How very true. Heh, <laughs> I just realized something. What's that? There is now more express engines than mixed traffic engines. Wait, really? Yeah. With Marcus, there are now six express engines, while we remain at just five. Are you counting Eagle? Yes. He has practically become one, despite being brought only for the goods work. Fair enough. Yeah, that is odd. And maybe not that smart. No, when thinking about it, not really. Maybe there should be something done about that. Yeah, and soon maybe. Considering the demand for more and more passenger trains are going up by the day, it's limited how many we can provide. Especially when considering the low number of engines we have who can actually handle those trains. Do you think Topham has noticed? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. But in any case, I think we should at least notify him of the problem. Sounds like a good idea. Afternoon, Eagle. Afternoon, Donald. Good run? Normal. Well, in your case, that means it was a good run. Ah, I don't know if I would say it like that. Well, I would. Why, thank you, Eagle. However, during the run, I was pondering about something. And what would that be? It has just occurred to me today that, with the arrival of Marcus, there are now more express engines and mixed traffic engines. Isn't that weird to think about? Yeah, that is weird. Even when counting me as a mixed traffic engines, there's still more express engines. How very strange. Indeed. And also maybe the reason to why I felt a bit overworked these past few days. Too many trains. I feel you. Considering we are responsible for a good portion of the passenger trains, as well as the lighter goods trains, it's really a shame that we had more engines for the job. It really is. And with ever increasing traffic loads, it's also perhaps a little more... worrying. It very much is. Who knows how long we fight can continue without struggling. Not as long, I'm afraid. No. Safe to say, I think we need some more mixed traffic locomotives. And fast. Indeed. Morning, Topham. You wanted to see me? Oh, hello, Morris. Yes, I did. Did you bring the index like I asked? I did, sir. Change of mind? What do you mean? Well, I just recall you telling me to hold this edition back since you didn't think you needed any more engines for the moment. I did say that. But, yes, I have had a change of mind. How come? I have come to notice, or rather I was notified, about our surprising lack of mixed traffic engines, despite the vital role they play for the railway. How many do we have? Five. Only five? James, Donald, Douglas, Tyler and Eagle. Only five. Hard to believe, eh? Indeed. Wait, doesn't that mean we have more express engines than mixed traffic engines? Yep. Huh. Interesting. Well, in that case, I'll leave you alone to look at the options. It does sound rather urgent. Thank you, Morris. Hmm. That's not a bad deal. And for three engines. Really nice. North British. Maybe Crowen would know something about them. Afternoon, Crowen. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? Well, I've been looking for some new locomotives to help the mixed traffic engines on the main line. And while looking through the index, I spotted an order for three North British Railway L-Class tank engines. Ooh, very interesting, sir. Indeed. And although they had a description, it wasn't really that thorough. So instead, I thought I could ask you if you knew anything about the class, and whether or not they would be good for mixed traffic use. Oh sir, they were good engines. Along with the similar M-Class, they were responsible for lots of suburban trains on our railway, and they excelled in that field. And although they mostly performed these and longer commuter trains, it wasn't uncommon to see them on goods trains now and then. They were quite powerful for their size, so I think they would be a good fit for this railway. Well, that's promising. By the way, were there any of the class's members who were non-faceless? There were a few, although a surprising little amount despite being a rather numerous class. Most of them were faceless, but there were a few, especially a set of three engines. 
They were dubbed the North British Triplets because they were so similar in appearance, yet so different in character. Would their names happen to be Ethan, Nick and Simon? Yes, they would be. How did you know? Well, they were the ones listed on the index. Oh really? Interesting. How would you describe their personality? Well, nothing like another. You have Ethan, the chipper and kind one, you have Simon, the grumpy and irritated one, and then you have Nick who... Well, he's really just a quiet one. He doesn't say much, if anything, so I don't really know what kind of engine he is. One thing I do know about him though is that he's ridiculously good at his job. Like, among the best I've ever seen. And what about the other two? Oh, they're good performers too. So if you're looking for performance, then they're definitely a match. However, personality-wise, that's where caution should be raised. Right, I'll remember that. Thank you for your input, Croven. It has been most appreciated. A pleasure, sir. Happy to help. What? Oh, sorry, I was just taking aback. Since when did we get triplets? Well, Mr. Green Engine, were there any triplets this morning? Um, no? Well, there you go. That must mean you've gotten triplets today. Alright, you. No need to be rude. Simon, would you keep that down? Do you remember any of what I said about making a good first impression? Well, you said that the job relied on both parties. Both needed to make good first impressions. But this green lad here decided to start with a ridiculously stupid and obvious question. For goodness sake, it was to set the tone you dimwit. He was actually trying. Still doesn't subtract from the question's stupidity. <sighs> I'm sorry there, he has a tendency to make things a little heated. I do not. You most certainly do. Sorry, like I said, heated. What's your name? It's Henry. What's yours? Well, I'm Ethan, this is Simon, as you probably picked up, and this is Nick. Well, hello, you three. It's nice to have you here. I hope that you're good at passenger trains since there's a lot of high expectations towards you. Well, we'll try our best to match those expectations. That's good. It's important in this case, given that it's passenger trains we're talking about. Alright, again with the stupid implications. You know that's our job? That's what we're built for? That's what we're best at? Pulling passenger trains. Will you shut up? Not if he keeps on with that. <sighs> Would you mind if we sorted this out? Not at all. I actually have to get my next goods train. See you around, lads. See you around. Yeah, of course, we're stationed at the same bloody shed. What a coincidence. For the love of God, Simon, please tone down with the heated outbursts. We're trying to settle into this new railway. If we're to do that properly, we need to get off to a good start with the other engines. But no, you've already botched one interaction. <sighs> Sorry, that was maybe a little unjustified for me to lash out at Henry like that. I'll try to make up for it. Good. Why haven't you said anything? I've had nothing to say. You two got off to an interesting start and I didn't have anything to add. Still, first impression matters. Well, one engine ruined the chance for a good introduction. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I've apologized. Not to Henry. If, yeah, yeah, I'll do it as soon as I can. Good. Well, Croven, it's been a bit since we last saw each other. Indeed it has. I am happy to see you a lot here in Sodor. We could definitely use your performance to boost our passenger sector on the main line. We would be happy to help. Many years of heavy suburban traffic does take a toll on an engine, so it'll be nice to have it a bit easier for once. Lazy. It's not healthy for an engine to work so much for so long. I've told you this several times. And I've given you the same reaction. <sighs> anyway, how was the area where you worked? It was good. We worked in the densely populated areas of Scotland, so traffic was heavy, but it was a nice place to work. Passenger traffic? Mostly, but we handled goods trains here and there. Despite us not being tended for that work. Which doesn't change the fact that it's a plus for an engine to prove itself more capable. What I'm saying is that we're mixed traffic engines at heart, although I think Topham is mostly going to use us on passenger trains. And it seems like a fair call. We've definitely been missing some wheels in that sector. Which we'll be happy to provide for. That reminded me of something. 
About what you said with proving oneself, remember the time you took an express train because I got stuck on the turntable? I do remember that. That was a fun challenge, despite the run not going that well. I don't think the passengers expected that anyway. They just needed someone to fill in while they fixed the turntable. Well, they wouldn't have to fix it if you didn't break it, Krobin. Oh, for goodness sake, Simon, you're still going on about that. You know I didn't do that. Oh yes, you did. You were there goofing around that morning, not taking yourself seriously, leading to you being careless and entering the turntable too fast, which caused it to bend and buckle, and ultimately become stuck. Like I've said a million times to you, it wasn't my fault. The turntable was brand new at the time. It was a teething trouble that caused it to become stuck. It was fixed in an hour, and an hour in railway times is about three days. The amount of backlog it caused was immense. What would you know about that? You were still sleeping. You should be more like Ethan. He willingly got up and about, despite not being intended for another two hours. I was doing the right thing. You should realize that. I was helping the railway. You weren't. I was being cautious. Like I said before, we weren't built for those kind of trains. Bloody Kalis was slacking all week as well. She should have been the one volunteering, not Ethan. Hey, don't you dare say that Kalis was slacking. You know the mental state she was in by then, following her accident, which caused a life. She was out of it for almost a full year before returning to full-time work. She's a fragile soul, and you should not bash her. Excuses, excuses, all the lot. More like weakness. Right, that's crossing the line. He hasn't said anything. Not one word. I even saw him earlier today, but he likewise said nothing. I wonder why. I've never seen anything like that. Really peculiar. Indeed. One is to wonder if he could add anything to settle their argument. I'd rather not anything more to what's already been added. Agreed. If there's one thing you don't mock, then it's mental issues. Right, I think we've had enough now. We're very happy to have you lot here, but Simon, you seriously need to calm yourself. And if you also have a bickering session with someone, please do it in private, not while we others can hear it. Very well. I apologize. Good. Evening, Engines. Evening, Evening sir. Sir. Evening, sir. Tonight, I've come to sum up the past two weeks for our new members. Ethan, Nick, and Simon have already put in excellent work ethics, and I'm very impressed with your performances. Even Nick, too? What could he have done? Quiet as ever. That's just unsettling for the passengers. I think you would be surprised, James. During these past two weeks, Nick here has presented something I've never seen before. In that time, you, James, had an on-time percentage of 86%. Well, I do my best, sir. While Nick, in the same time frame, had an on-time percentage of 100%. Huh? Which is just jaw-dropping. Despite the weather, track conditions, obstacles, anything, Nick has managed to bring all his trains to their destinations on time. Neither one minute too early, nor one minute too late. Well, I do my best, sir. And I encourage you to keep it up. And that goes for all of you. 
I'm very pleased with the results you've provided, and I'm looking forward to seeing how you perform moving forward. Good night, engines. That's a first. Was he also like that back on the North British? Believe it or not, yes. Back there, he likewise had an incredibly high track record. That's just remarkable. But what was he like in terms of personality? Well, the problem is, Henry, I don't know. When I introduced him to Topham back when he was purchasing them, I said that he was quiet and ridiculously good at his job. Problem is, that's about all I know about him. Interesting. Should we be concerned? Is he suffering or something? Again, I don't know. We've tried to get some answers, but he hasn't opened up before. Well, hopefully he can do that soon. Yeah, hopefully. Right, Nick, we're ready to go. Very well. Before we do so, I just need to know, how heavy is this train? About 150 tons. What are you doing? I'm just initiating my routine before starting a run. What does that mean? Well, I'm just making sure, but I think I got it down. In order to top that small hill over there, most efficiently, I would need to be going at around 25 miles an hour. Granted, I don't have that much of a running start to achieve that speed, we're more looking at around 12 miles an hour. Not perfect, but it'll do. Huh? How did you deduce that? Well, by knowing your limits and simple calculations. You call that simple? Yeah, it's really not that hard. To climb any hill efficiently, you need to find the right balance between speed and power. It applies to any vehicle. For a steam locomotive, factors like how steep the hill is, how heavy the train is, and how well the locomotive works all play a part. If you know all these factors, you can figure out the best speed needed to climb the hill without using too much fuel and without straining yourself too much. That's the base of it. Okay, and you know all these factors, including how steep the hill is? Well, I figured that out a while ago. How? Simple. While descending it, I noted how much the water tilted in my tanks, after which my driver measured it. Huh, gotta admit, that's quite clever. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better get moving. And preferably without interruption, I do need to get all the speed I need. Okay, that's something new. Right, now I guess I have to wait for Gary. Are you expecting Gary? Yes. Well, he's been held up at Brendam, so he won't be coming. Another engine has been called instead. Very well. Thank you for the information. Ah, hello Nick. Glad you could come. Now we better get ready so we can get moving as fast as possible. 
I think you've picked up by now that it's necessary to approach the hill at full speed and- Ah, now that's where you're mistaken, Henry. What? What do you mean? Well, to pass the hill most efficiently, the optimal speed is not maximum. Like I said earlier, a lot of factors are at play. How heavy is this train? About 700 tons. Right, we have to achieve about 40 miles an hour for highest efficiency. And how did you deduce that? Well, pretty much the same as the hill at the harbor. Granted, there's more factors at play here, but bottom line remains the same. And why not go full speed? Well, it requires a lot to achieve full speed. And this will lead to many problems, most prominent of which is a rougher ride. This is especially important when thinking about passenger trains. I actually advise passenger trains to approach the hill even slower. Why? Well, you have to consider the curve at the top. If approaching it too fast, it can lead to a rough journey. But since you don't have to worry so much about that, given that it's a good train, we can go a little bit faster. <sighs> Nick, I'm not sure about this. You don't believe in it? No, I don't. Henry, it might sound outlandish, I know. But you have to trust me, it's going to work. How can I trust you? Well, there's a reason to why I've had a perfect on-time percentage. Henry, if this goes wrong, which it won't, I'll take the blame for it. <sighs> Fine, let's go with your approach. Very well, I'll get ready. Evening, Henry. Good day? Quite good, actually. That's great. How did it go with your heavy goods train? Very well, actually. Really? And why is that? Well, because I tried something new today. I took Gordon's Hill at 40 miles an hour. Only 40? Why did you do that? Well, it actually led to a nice passing of the hill. What was that based on? Well, it was based on the suggestion of my banker, who was Nick. Nick, why would you suggest something like that? Well, Crowen, it's because it was the most efficient speed to approach the hill with. What do you mean? Well, Groven, and you other engines, there is a reason to why my on-time percentage is 100%. And to put it short, it's straight up math. I've demonstrated my thought process to Henry today, but I thought it might be appropriate to relay it to you as well. Okay, go on. Well, I myself am a very thoughtful engine. I don't just do my job and get on with life. No, I'm the type of engine to analyze everything, down to the smallest detail. This includes what I've done on set run, what I could have done better, and ultimately what I need to focus on for next time. I go into this incredibly satisfying meditation state where I see it all for me, which helps a lot with the analyzation. It's actually quite pleasant. And it's with this where I've been able to perfect my runs on the railway. A slight downside to it though is my lack of presence within the community I'm supposed to be a part of. So, is that why you haven't been talking? It's why I don't talk. I assign 100% of my focus to perfecting the art. So much so that I don't have the capacity to focus on anything else. Like making friends or interacting with the community. A terrible thing maybe, but the results speak. A complete waste of time. Imagine giving all your focus to perfecting something you can't even perfect. Well excuse me Simon, but who of us has the best track record? Fair play. That's what I thought. What brought all this on? Well, I wasn't always like this. For the first year of my life, I wasn't in this state at all. I acted like any regular engine. I did all my runs on time, but they weren't nearly as perfect. But it still counted as a spotless record. That was, however, until one day when I arrived 14 minutes late with a train. And it wasn't because of any other obstacles. It was purely my fault. I was scuttled by this. And that night, I swore to myself that from that day forward, I wasn't to miss any other train. This was when I started to meditate. And, well, I haven't missed a run since. You know, it's actually rather remarkable that performance you've perfected. But I have to ask, do you need to continue with it? 
Well, no, not really. I think I've perfected the art enough. I've concluded that it's time for me to open up a bit more about myself and perhaps become more part of the community. And besides, the instincts will remain whether I focus on them or not. By now, it's basically muscle memory. So does that mean you're going to be more open for conversations? Well, I'll try. Who would have thought it? Nick being open and willing for conversations. Yeah, who would have thought it?